morning. I am absolutely delighted to be able to welcome you to our service today here at Christ the Servant King, CSK Hampton Church in Peterborough. We are so pleased that you've decided to connect with us via our YouTube channel. My name is Sylvia and I'm the vicar here. Later in our service today, Joel, our curate, will be speaking. I'm grateful to him and to all the people who have helped put this service together today. Not only those who you will see on the screen, but also those who work on the technology behind the scenes. Now, if you joined us last Sunday, you will know that we're in the season of Advent in the church. Advent calendars started on Tuesday the 1st of December. I wonder how many of you have an Advent calendar with chocolate. Last year, I was very blessed indeed as someone gave me a Kinder Advent calendar. My surname is Kinder, but sadly, I'm not related to the chocolate brand. But I do really love both chocolate and surprises, so I ought to be related to the Kinder brand. Last Sunday, I explained that had we been in church, we would have had our own Advent wreath or ring. As we are now out of the latest lockdown, Gloria, one of our church members, has been into CSK and made our Advent ring for us. So we're able to use that today in our service. So why do we have an Advent wreath or ring? Well, the story goes that in 1839, a Lutheran minister working at a children's mission in Germany created a wreath out of the wheel of a cart. The minister placed 20 small red candles around the outer ring of the wheel and four larger white candles inside the ring, lighting the red candles on weekdays and the four white candles on Sundays as a way for the children to count down the days until Christmas. They didn't have Advent calendars then. Advent wreaths were eventually fashioned out of evergreens twisted together in a circle to symbolise continuous life across the seasons, from the death of winter to the new life of spring. Naturally, this earthly symbolism also points to the spiritual symbolism of newness and the promise of eternal life and salvation offered through the sacrifice of Jesus. The circular nature of the wreath, similar to a wedding ring or band, is further meant to reflect the unending love of Christ and eternal life offered through salvation. Holly leaves, berries and seeds are sometimes added to the wreath as well. Holly leaves can be prickly and therefore used to represent the crown of thorns placed on Jesus' head during his crucifixion. Berries, which are typically red, also point to Christ's sacrifice and the blood shed for sins. Pine cones, seeds and nuts are also placed within the wreath as a symbol and promise of new life. Together, the elements of the Advent wreath reflect the new life and eternal salvation offered through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, who we now celebrate. The candle for the first Sunday of Advent represents hope. This Sunday, the second Sunday of Advent, the candle represents peace. As the second candle is lit, I invite you to join with me in the prayer on the screen. Peace is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the peace we find in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's continue in prayer. Lord Jesus, light of the world, the prophets said you would bring peace and save your people from trouble. Help us today to be people of peace, people of kindness, to share your light and love with one another. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Let's worship together in song.
Well, good morning and welcome to CSK Voices. So who do we have this morning? Hello, my name is Helen and I moved to Hampton Vale four weeks ago. <laughs> wow. So you're a very new member to CSK Church, Helen. Yes. Would you like to share with us um, how you God brought you to Peterborough and to Hampton and indeed to CSK Church? So I'm going to start my story four years ago uh, when my husband got a job in Peterborough and I, I did actually come and have a look um, and was drawn to the Hamptons back then but that wasn't quite the right time for us to move um, because his job was short-term contracts. Anyway this year first of April his job was made permanent and at the end of lockdown, so in June, we started to think, well, perhaps we should be considering moving to the Hamptons. Um, if you didn't put your house on the market, you couldn't even get to look around houses. So it's a step of faith, we did that and sold our house really quickly in less than two weeks. So that felt like confirmation to move. Um, and again, if God wanted us here, perhaps he was calling us to the church. I've been to Chimes many times and there's something about Chimes that kept drawing me back. So my daughter and I went to visit the church um, just as it had opened up again. And we met the lovely Rachel, who was very enthusiastic, told us all about the different things the church was doing, like with the food bank, um, lots of things that they were hoping to do. And that felt in line with things that I'm interested in. And I felt perhaps I could help out in the church um, so we found a house quite quickly and offer was accepted in July um, but then things went really slowly um, and by September I started to have a few doubts uh, things were becoming problematic we're trying to get the purchase to go through so I contacted you Sylvia <laughs> Um, and told you all about what was happening and you prayed with me you said the prayer chain would also pray for us to help and you had a verse of scripture that said that God would counsel us in this situation which was really helpful and then very soon after that um, my daughter also had a picture of Jesus being the anchor of the chain. So that's the chains, all the people in the sale, there were lots of people involved in selling their houses, but we're all anchored to Jesus and, and that he would see us through. And within a few days of that, we exchanged contracts um, and we moved five weeks after that. So at the end of October. Brilliant. And I understand God was very faithful to you as well in your Bible group back at your old church, because there was a significant passage of scripture then that he gave you that you felt guided you that this was the time would you like to tell us about that yes yeah, so um that was we were doing the bible course we're doing it online uh, back in june and we were looking at exodus and that really spoke very strongly to me because it was saying that um in the, in the story of exodus god helps the people so god makes the way for the people to to leave and um, it felt that's what he was saying to us, that in spite of lockdown, in spite of a very difficult time to, I mean, the roads were almost empty, um, So, but God would make a way. Brilliant. And so moving during lockdown, moving during this pandemic is difficult, moving to a new area, moving to a new church. So, so how are you settling in into Hampton and into the church during these challenging times? Yeah, so even I'm amazed that in four weeks, the number of people I have managed to meet, mainly through walking with people. Um, I kept going back into the church. Um, I went and did the labyrinth, which was amazing. I really felt God speaking to me there. And as I came out the labyrinth, um, I met Lauren and a little voice in my head said, um, see if you can ask for her phone number so that you can contact her. And so I've been walking with Lauren and Lizzie once a week and then through Lauren I met Danny. Danny has been amazingly helpful again introducing me to people from the church whether it's one at a time outside doing a walk um, so yeah God is definitely making a way. Excellent so how can we pray for you Helen? Um, so I've started to help out in chimes um, but just pray that God will lead and guide me um, as into what he wants me to do here. 
Excellent. Let's pray now then, shall we? Lord God, we so thank and praise you for your faithfulness to Helen and David. It is so clear, Lord, that you have led them, that you have been counselling them and watching over them. And Lord, as Helen and David seek your guiding hand now, Lord, I pray that you would continue to open the doors that need opening for them and close any doors that need closing. That Lord, as um, Helen's heart is to just really serve you during this time, Lord, I pray that you would show her the things that you are calling her to do. Lord, continue to protect her and David. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Thank Speak you soon. Sorry. Bye-bye. <laughs>do a wonderful job of getting ready. Well, talking of getting ready, um, I'm getting ready for something at the moment. I'm I'm getting ready for Christmas. And to be honest with you, I'm getting a bit stressed about being ready for Christmas. This is the first time that we've hosted the extended family at our house for Christmas. So I'm, I'm a bit nervous. What if everything goes wrong? What if I forget something? Well, I've made this list, and it's a big list of things that I need to get ready for Christmas. And I've got to get ticking these things up as soon as I can. Well, let's take a look at them one by one. Here's the first one. Let's see, am I ready with this? It says, decorate the tree. Well, I've got a Christmas tree, and it's very nicely decorated, thanks to some help from my, from my family. It's got some lovely lights on it. And it's looking nice. So that's good. We made a start to the list already. Excellent. Well, what's next? It says wrap presents. Well, there's a bit of a problem there because I haven't finished buying my presents yet. So how can I wrap them? Well, 
I think I'd better start getting a move on with my Christmas shopping so we can have all our presents nicely wrapped for Christmas Day. What else have we got? What's our third one? Ah. It says, make Christmas pudding. Well, I don't buy a Christmas pudding in my house. Um, I like to make my own, and I've been doing it every year for quite a while. And I've already made my Christmas puddings this year. So my Christmas pudding is sitting in the cupboard, aging nicely, waiting for Christmas Day. It's ready. Well, I'm glad I've done some things on this list. Wow. This one is a little bit of a problem, maybe. I, I haven't bought my turkey yet. We like to eat turkey on Christmas Day. What do you like to eat for Christmas dinner? Well, if you're going to eat it for Christmas dinner, you've got to buy it first. So I'm going to have to brave the hordes of shoppers at the supermarket on the day that the turkeys are available. I hope that I get one the right size. It says clean and tidy the house. Well, if we're going to have people round, we've got to have a lovely, clean and tidy house. Well, we cleaned and tidy just at the weekend and it looked pretty nice then. But, well, you know what happens, don't you? You use different rooms, you get toys out, you play with things, and not everything gets put away quite as it should, and things get dirty. And it's a job that just keeps on going and going. So we're going to have to have another go at that before Christmas Day for sure. Well, I've got lots of work to do. What's the last one on my list here? Oh, well, this one's a bit strange. It's to get my heart ready for Christmas Day. How do I do that? Well, I can't give my heart a shower or wash it, or I, I can't tidy it or anything like that. How, how do I do that? That's a bit of a puzzle, isn't it? Why is that on my list to get ready for Christmas? I wonder. Well, I'm going to put my list down here and I have to keep checking it to see that I'm ticking off those jobs and getting ready for Christmas. Well, that was not something we were expecting, was it? That we have to get a heart ready for Christmas. Have you thought about that before? Why do we need to do this? Well, it reminds me of our Bible reading today. Our Bible reading told us that there's some really special news. Something amazing is happening. Someone really special is coming. And they're so special, they're more special than your grandma. That's hard to believe, isn't it? They're more special than the Queen, even. That's amazing. That's pretty special. They're more special than Peppa Pig or Paw Patrol or whatever other TV characters you like. Can you imagine that? Well, if you're going to have a visitor that special, you've got some real preparations to do, haven't you? How can we get ready for a visitor that special? Well, in our reading, we met a man named John and... He was doing something called baptising people, and he was telling them to get ready. He was telling everyone how they were to prepare for the coming of this really special person. He wasn't the really, really special person himself, although he, he was pretty special. He was like a messenger going ahead of a king, making sure that everyone knew the news that the king was coming, and that everyone had to get ready for him to arrive. What would you do if you had a special visitor coming to your house? What sort of things would you do to get ready? Well, some of them would be things that were on my list, wouldn't they? Tidying up, cleaning up, getting well addressed. When you're getting ready for someone to come, you want to make sure you look presentable, that your house is nice and tidy. And, well, you don't want people to turn up when you've just been out in the garden, your hands are all dirty. And you've been getting a bit of a sweat on and, well, you could smell a little bit better. Now you want to be nice and well showered, smelling lovely and nice and clean. 
Well, we've done a lot of hand washing lately, haven't we? So we know a thing or two about getting clean. Have you have you been saying, singing happy birthday twice while you've been washing your hands to make sure you've done it for long enough? Well, I've not been doing it out loud because I, I would get some very strange looks sometimes. But sometimes I've been doing it in my head. Well, we know a lot about getting things clean this year, don't we? But for Jesus, who was the special one who was going to come, he wasn't worried about how clean people's hands were, or even their bodies. He knew that all of us need our hearts to be prepared to meet him. John's baptism, his special ceremony of washing people, was symbolic of the life change that people wanted. It couldn't fix people's hearts. We've already said, haven't we? You can't wash your hearts. But he was getting people ready for the one who could, for the one whose Holy Spirit could change us from the inside out, Jesus. And the amazing news is that the Son of God came for us and and he knows us so intimately, so perfectly, that he doesn't expect us to clean up our act before he comes to us. He accepts and loves us just as we are, mess and all, dirt and all. However, he doesn't want us in our hearts and in, in our lives to have to stay messy. He wants to deal with the mess of our lives and the mess of our hearts so that we can be free from it forever. And he died for us on the cross to take away the uncleanness of our hearts, our sin, the way in which we've disobeyed God and let him down, the way in which we've hurt each other. He died so that those things could be wiped away. And having been forgiven and wiped clean by him, how amazing would it be if when he came back again, and he's going to come back again, if he could see the amazing change he's made to our lives. It's, it's the difference, isn't it, between that guess that, oh, gosh, we really dread them coming. We, we know that they're going to judge us really harshly if things are not absolutely perfect. And that most special, kind, adored friend or relative who we are so desperate to spend time with, we want to have them to have a lovely time with us and therefore it's the least we can do to get stuff ready as well as we are able to. Knowing that they will praise our efforts no matter how imperfect they are. If we forget something, they won't mind. So now we are waiting for Jesus to come again. And this time not as a baby, but as a king in all his splendour and glory. The hardships we've experienced lately are reminders that we're to live as if he's coming soon. As no one knows the day or the hour of his return. These events have been a call to wake up and to watch for him like we're waiting for our most adored house guest, our most adored visitor to arrive. As the Christmas carol, Joy to the World, says, let every heart prepare him room. That's how we are to get ready for Christmas. Are you ready? He's coming. To the world, the Lord is come. Let us receive a King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven. the world. 
the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. inside and out, from the youngest to the oldest, everyone is precious to you. Thank you for being with us during our lockdown journey as a community, as a church, as families and as individuals. As we are reminded of Mary craving her newborn son, we pray for all mothers who have welcomed babies during the Covid pandemic, those known to us and those who we have yet to meet. We bring them before you now as they continue to love and care for their sons and daughters speaking to their anxieties with your still small voice of calm. Embrace them with your loving arms as they navigate this new adventure without the close company and support of family and friends. As we are reminded of Joseph, we know that you brought peace to his heart when he faced confusion and fear. Be with all new fathers at this time as they seek to care for their children, as Joseph cared for Mary as they travelled to Bethlehem. Give fathers the strength to care for those they love and affirm them in this new role. As we're reminded of the birth of your son, we pray for all children as they near the end of their busy term at school. Thank you for their resilience, their sense of awe and wonder, their love of life. Keep them safe, we pray. May we all be reminded of your love for us as your children. And now let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This week, Donkey has been taking a journey through Hampton, retelling the Christmas story. You can check out what's been happening on Facebook, on our CSK Children and Families page, and see if you can recognise exactly where he's been. This evening, we have Worship Oasis in CSK at 5pm, an hour spent in the building to reflect on a Bible passage, soak in worship and be able to wait on the Holy Spirit for words and pictures to share with one another. The following two Sunday evenings, there will be a carols by candlelight service in the church at 5pm. Now you need to book places to be able to attend one of the carol services to make sure that we don't exceed capacity with social distancing rules in place. The link for booking will be on the screen at the very end of the service today. So let's pray for the Lord's blessing before we sing our final song together. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Did you know 
you to know what? Oh, oh, oh. Yo. The Holy Spirit is our God living inside us Did you know, did you know what? Oh, oh, oh. Yo. We are the church and we're shining in the darkness Holy Spirit, help us to share God's love God's love Power to glow, glow, glow to glow, glow, glow By the Holy Spirit We run in power to glow To glow Did you know, did you know? What? Oh, oh, oh The Holy Spirit is alive and always with us Did you know, did you know? What? Oh, oh, oh We are the church lighting up the world for Jesus Holy Spirit Help us to share God's love, God's love Power to glow, glow, glow Power to glow, glow, glow By the Holy Spirit We are all empowered to glow, to glow Glow, glow, glow